the planet ablaze. That's how Earth can be characterized 66 million years ago. And it was all because of a cosmic object hurtling towards our planet. The catastrophe that shook the world claimed the lives of most of the living beings on our planet. But what was Earth like moments before this event? And which living beings inherited it after these tragic events? That's exactly what you're about to find out. It was an ordinary day on our planet, a day from the Cretaceous period. This period gifted us with the largest number of huge dinosaurs. There were all conditions for their prosperity. Some parts of our planet, where the climate was colder, those who preferred cooler conditions for their existence live. Closer to the equator, the temperature was much warmer, allowing other creatures to conquer their continents. Tyrannosaurs raised their offspring, teaching them to hunt other dinosaurs. Some of them mastered the ability to swim. In the sky, pterosaurs soared high, carefully scanning their prey on the Earth's surface. Argentinosaurus moved slowly around lakes in search of food. Under the water's cover, plesiosaurs pursued their prey. Thanks to their powerful limbs, prey had practically no chance of escaping their demise. The climate at that time provided our inhabitants with the freedom of distribution. The humid climate predominant in North America and Central Europe allowed dinosaurs to easily find food. The average temperature of the Earth was 15 degrees higher than today, reaching around 29 degrees Celsius or 84 degrees Fahrenheit. And the world's ocean was 300 meters higher than it is now. All this allowed plants to reach the peak of their development. In addition to familiar conifers and ginkgo plants, flowering plants spread rapidly thanks to insect pollination. Grass began to grow everywhere, providing an excellent grazing ground for dinosaurs. This, incidentally, also reduced the number of conflicts between them, as when there is plant food available, many dinosaurs preferred not to attack their kin to avoid risks. Small reptiles also thrived during this period. Lizards still roamed various terrains, from arid deserts to humid jungles. Frogs still hunted small insects to replenish their food supplies. Crocodiles held their breath underwater to strike at the most unpredictable moment, and snakes silently slithered among fallen leaves to avoid making sounds. But in an instant, this entire cohesive mechanism collapsed and the planet plunged into chaos. Seconds before this event, a huge asteroid was hurtling towards our planet. Its speed was about 27 kilometers per second. At this speed, it could fly from New York to San Francisco in just two minutes. Being the size of a large metropolis, it flew towards our planet. Collision. The force of this collision is comparable to the simultaneous explosion of a billion atomic bombs. A thunderous rumble echoed throughout the planet, and no one understood what was happening. And if the inhabitants of present-day Australia could only hear this sound, those who lived in the territory of North America had the opportunity to see it. Like, for example, the Tyrannosaur, because that's where this huge meteorite crashed. Now almost all scientists agree that the location of the asteroid's impact is the territory near the current Yucatan Peninsula. Research was conducted there and a crater was discovered that fits all the parameters of the collision site. Later, this crater will be called Chicxulub. In an instant, a bright light blinded everyone near the collision site. Then the shockwave literally threw them back meters while the ionized air seared their bodies from within. A sharp spike in temperature scorched all living things within a radius of thousands of kilometers. The planet trembled. From such an impact, an instant tsunami formed, carrying death to all who remained alive. 
It's terrifying to imagine the size of the waves in those moments. Simultaneously, tectonic plates began to shift. In some parts of our planet, small mountains began to form. Waves began to drag dinosaurs into the depths. They had no chance to survive. Their fate was sealed. The collision raised huge clouds of smoke. This smoke was mixed with ash and fine stones, which rose upward. But soon they fell back to our planet like a hail of fire. A total of 15 trillion tons of ash and soot were ejected into the air, making it as dark during the day as it was at night. The air temperature reached an unimaginable 400 degrees Celsius. It was a real hell where not everyone could survive. Earthquakes instantly awakened dormant volcanoes, which began to spew tons of lava onto the surface of the Earth. All this further raised columns of smoke throughout the planet. The resulting lack of light caused plants to starve. Their photosynthesis was halted for two years because they saw no sunlight. Phytoplankton, a crucial element in the ocean's food chain, disappeared, and along with it, zooplankton and other marine animals began to vanish. Especially affected were those marine creatures that inhabited the surface of the Earth. For them, the lack of important nutrients was most significant. Moreover, due to the deaths of smaller marine inhabitants, there was literally nothing for large predators to eat. But those that dwelled in the depths of the seas and oceans felt relatively fine. After all, dead bodies sank to the bottom, where they were consumed by deep-sea scavengers. The living beings that managed to survive in the first days after the asteroid's fall could live a little longer. That's because they fed on the remains of their dead kin. But this didn't last long, as the supply began to run out and they had no alternative ways of obtaining food. Eventually, they died agonizingly. During this period, our planet lost a huge number of living creatures. On land, a large number of lizards, insects, pterosaurs, and plants died. In the sea, plesiosaurs and mosasaurs became extinct. The number of bony fish, sharks, and mollusks decreased. In total, about 75% of all existing species of living organisms at that time became extinct. But the most well-known part of this mass extinction was the extinction of non-avian dinosaurs. They all perished. No longer could the roar of Tyrannosaurs be heard, the stomping of Argentinosaurus, the howling of Allosaurs, or the bellow of Triceratops. All of this remained in the history of our planet. But there were survivors, those who were in a safe oval sphere with a dense protective layer, those who had not yet hatched from eggs. And what is remarkable is that they were dinosaurs. But these dinosaurs were not like their ancestors. They had feathers. These feathers played a crucial role for them. After all, they helped retain heat inside their bodies. And this skill was critically important at that time as the average temperature of the Earth began to sharply decrease due to the lack of sunlight. These creatures were birds. As history has shown, they became the most successful dinosaurs of all. After all, only they were able to survive the mass extinction at the end of the Cretaceous period. They learned a very important ability, the ability to eat plant seeds. Plant seeds, unlike leaves, bark, and other types of flora, can be stored in soil or on the ground for a very long time while maintaining nutritional properties. And it was these products that were available after the global extinction. Fortunately, the seeds managed to survive as they were hidden deep in the soil. The family tree of dinosaurs was practically completely destroyed, and it was birds that managed to continue their lineage. But they appeared even earlier, about 150 million years ago. Back then, they were much more ferocious than after the asteroid impact. They were true flying giants who controlled all the airspace of our planet. Ajdakids were the main ones among them.
Some of them could have a wingspan of up to 10 meters. The favorite prey of these creatures was fish, as they were much easier to catch. But giants like Quetzalcoatlus could also prey on small dinosaurs, lifting them up. They often competed with dinosaurs for the right to feast on carrion, and sometimes they even emerged victorious. Their skills were inherited by a large number of modern birds. Pelicans are one such example. Their bodies average about one and a half meters in length. Inhabiting shallow coastal waters and shallow freshwater and saltwater lakes, pelicans prefer to eat fish. They have loose feathers that quickly get wet. But pelicans have learned to squeeze them out with their beaks. They are not fond of flying, preferring to float on the water's surface. And when they find prey, they dip their heads into the water and catch their prey. To maximize their catch, they often hunt in flocks, creating a semicircle so that fish practically cannot escape from them. Another group of fish-loving birds still inhabits Asia, fish owls. Despite their relatively small body size of 70 centimeters, their wingspan reached almost two meters. These birds are quite picky in their gastronomic preferences. Mostly, the fish owl feeds on salmon fish going for spawning. Usually, the fish owl hunts like this. It spots swimming fish from a rock, steep shore, or overhanging tree above the water, then dives into the water and grabs it with its talons. But long before the appearance of these creatures, birds often struggled with the landlords of that time dinosaurs. An example is Anchionis, a small feathered dinosaur. Behind the trees, a real dinosaur, Synraptor, is closely watching him. Its gaze is fixed on a small female lost in the forest, and the stomach demands food. Chase. The clumsiness of Anchionis plays a cruel joke on him. He constantly stumbles over stones. But luckily for him, Synraptor cannot catch up with him. Only here, at the edge of the cliff, their chase is over. It seems that nothing can save the baby from death, nothing except its wings. Jumping off the cliff, it spreads them and begins to glide. It was from the ability to glide that the emergence of birds began. Later, they learned to flap them in flight. This allowed them to truly fly and it revolutionized the sky, increasing the chances of birds in the fight against dinosaurs. And if back then they had relatively few chances, now we can observe how their struggle would have gone if their opponents were smaller. For example, the size of a monkey. In the tropical forests of Southern Africa, there are a large number of monkeys, but their life is far from being a fairy tale. On the ground, they are stalked by silent and agile snakes. In the water, crocodiles wait to feast on them. They only have to hide in the trees. It would seem the best place to avoid collisions with other inhabitants. If not for one thing, harpy eagles, the heaviest eagles. Its strong talons can hold sloths and monkeys. Therefore, these tree dwellers can be attacked from the air at any moment. The harpy eagle itself weighs about eight kilograms. This is an excellent example of predatory birds of our time, and they are quite similar to those inhabitants that were on our planet millions of years ago. The asteroid impact halted the clock of evolution. Such events had occurred before, so the planet successfully learned to restart them. After a prolonged period of darkness, our planet cooled down. Plants were also affected by the impact. Few of them were able to survive the absence of photosynthesis, and even fewer could endure the cold temperatures. Ferns, flowers, and grass practically disappeared from our planet during this period, but there were more cold-resistant plants, such as sequoias. From the seeds that remained underground, these huge trees began to sprout. Sometimes, their height reached 100 meters, Almost their entire length was made up of a trunk, with only a leafy canopy at the top. Several million years after the meteorite impact, our planet began to be inhabited by new creatures. 
mammals. After the meteorite impact, these creatures began to dominate our planet, and they still do. Some of them adapted to the cold climate. Back then, they were small, about the size of a rat, or at best, a raccoon. Small mammals gradually began to populate the planet. The absence of dinosaurs allowed them to emerge from their burrows, but they were already under the scrutiny of flying owls. With sharp eyesight, the owl stalks its prey. The aerial hunter dives down and consumes its victim. But not all survivors were of such size. There were those for whom mammals were true giants. These were cockroaches. They were true masters of adaptation. Resembling trilobites with their hard exoskeleton, these creatures were able to easily survive the Cretaceous Paleogene extinction event. Strangely enough, they were relatively well prepared for such a turn of events. After the asteroid impact, cockroaches found shelter in small soil cracks. There, they could find protection from the heat. Unlike other creatures, cockroaches were omnivorous scavengers. This allowed them to clean up the planet from the remains of animals or plants. Flowers began to spread across our planet again. This was a critically important aspect for insects as they worked closely with flowers. Flowers provided them with food while insects spread pollen to other flowers. Bees, beetles and even dragonflies worked in tandem. By this time, they were already flying around our planet. They had no enemies during the dinosaur era. But now, 55 million years ago, their territory began to be encroached upon by other inhabitants of the Earth. Parrots. They were among those who liked to eat pollen. With unique and diverse colorings, parrots themselves resembled flowers, yellow, blue, and others. By eating plant seeds, tree bark, and exotic fruits, Parrots were not averse to feasting on plant pollen. With their beaks, they could eat pollen. But their beaks were large enough to penetrate deep into the flowers. But there were other inhabitants with thinner beaks, hummingbirds. These were truly unique birds. They could fly backwards, being the smallest birds on Earth. They weighed about three grams. At the same time, their length was 21 centimeters. In just one second, a hummingbird could flap its wings 80 times. But what was most important for feeding was its beak. It was thin and long. With this long beak, a hummingbird could eat pollen deep inside flowers. And thanks to its maneuverability, a hummingbird could avoid confrontations with other birds. Unfortunately for insects, these birds took their pollen. Among hummingbirds, there were also varieties with extremely long beaks. Like the sword-billed hummingbird, for example, half of its length consisted of a beak which could reach 10 centimeters in length. With this beak, they could reach pollen from the deepest flowers. These tiny birds competed with small insects, but they never managed to fully dominate insects, probably because their numbers were relatively small, while there were huge numbers of insects with a great diversity. Most insects inhabited areas near water bodies. Swamps, lakes, and rivers were among them. It was here that crocodiles lived. These reptiles managed to restore their kind after the extinction. However, the largest of them passed away. For example, Sarcosuchus. It failed to adapt to the new world because it required a large amount of food, which was scarce at the time but small crocodiles successfully crossed the boundary of the Cretaceous period. They had several skills that helped them do this. Their semi-aquatic lifestyle allowed them to quickly change their habitat, either venturing onto land or staying in the water. Thanks to their broad dietary preferences, they could easily find food from dead dinosaurs. In our previous video, we talked about how a crocodile can slow down its heartbeat. In addition to this, it can also slow down its metabolism. This allows them to live for a long time without food. All these factors played into the hands of crocodiles during this challenging time. About 40 million years ago, the first rhinoceroses 
began to emerge. These creatures often had fur since they inhabited cold climate zones. One of the ancestors of rhinoceroses was Monoceros. It had two large horns located on the tip of its head. With them, it could dig holes to reach small insects. It might seem that rhinoceroses may have something in common with Triceratops, but there is no evidence that they were ancestors of these creatures at the moment. In the ancient world, due to the large number of available niches, a large number of terrestrial birds had the opportunity to become dominant power on our planet. Among them were Forus rakos. Their length could reach 2.5 meters, and they weighed about 200 kilograms. Leading a predatory lifestyle, they fed on meat and carrion. Thanks to their large and fast legs, they could reach high running speeds, but sacrificed the ability to fly as their wings were completely atrophied. Their head was heavy and the beak was sharp, like that of hawks. Due to their heavy head, the center of gravity of Forus Rakos was ahead, allowing them to maneuver quickly in pursuit. And their powerful beak, like a hammer, pierced the bodies of their prey. They often hunted mammals, such as Theosodonts. These planet inhabitants resembled present-day marsupials, having small fur and sensitive ears. But even such sensitive ears did not always allow them to hear the approach of Forus Rakos. And now, this played a very bad joke on them. Chasing Theosodonts, the Forus Rakos preferred to choose the weakest prey, a cub. With its small paws, it couldn't keep up with its adult counterparts. Knocking down its prey, the Forus Rakos makes the final blow in front of the mother's eyes. If Forus Rakos had teeth, they would have looked more like furry dinosaurs than birds. But even without teeth, they instilled terror in mammals. But another animal was unlikely to become a victim of Forus Rakos, because it had a huge and dense armor. This is Glyptodon. From it, modern armadillos originated. Inhabiting the territory of North America, they could reach two tons, with a length of almost three meters. It had a strong shell, like a turtle, which completely covered its body. Thanks to the peculiar structure of this shell, it was almost impossible to break, as it consisted of small, fused plates. In case of danger, the Glyptodon hid in its shell and successfully endured attacks by hunters. The aquatic world 20 million years ago was a place where one could only remotely understand that 46 million years ago there was a mass extinction. Most of the huge creatures, such as ichthyosaurs, disappeared from the face of the Earth forever. But other large creatures began to appear. The first ancestors of whales, Basilosaurus. The length of these creatures reached 21 meters. Their body was significantly more elongated and narrowed than that of any modern whale species. Basilosaurus had several pairs of fins, but some of them were almost atrophied so it only used the front fins. They fed on both small and large fish. Thanks to their large teeth, they could even eat sharks. Near the shores of the new seas that began to form due to the movement of continents, coral reefs began to flourish again. On the one hand, these were plants because they received energy through photosynthesis. But on the other hand, they were also animals since they consisted of polyps. The diversity of coral reefs attracted small fish from all over the sea. They often swam here to hide from predators or find something to eat. These were real underwater cities. During this epoch, medium-sized fish experienced a resurgence. Salmon began to appear. They inhabited the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans. Their family was just beginning to emerge at that time and to find the best habitat, they often migrated in search of the best place to live. Perch fishes also began to spread en masse throughout the underwater world. Xander and Ruff were the main ones. The success of the development of medium-sized fish was due to the fact that they mainly feed on zooplankton and small fish. And at that time, 
our world was literally teeming with such creatures. So finding food for them posed no problems, and their numbers multiplied incredibly. It was much more difficult to find food for larger creatures. Sharks were among them. After the meteorite impact, this species managed to survive and recover. They became the fiercest inhabitants of our planet for millions of years. Sharks ate almost everything they saw. They attacked fish that were not as strong as them. Also, small fish that moved in herds were a perfect addition to their diet. The key factor in the survival of sharks was that they had better maneuverability compared to other fish, in addition to being not as large as their neighbors in the oceans of the Mesozoic era. But there were those that were almost indistinguishable from the giants of that era, Megalodon. It was one of the largest fish of all time. Its length could reach up to 15 meters, and it weighed about 30 tons. It was a super predator that sat at the top of the food chain. Thanks to its wide jaws, which contained a large number of sharp and large teeth, the Megalodon left no chances for survival. They fed on small cetaceans, sirens, pinnipeds, and large fish, devouring them alive or dead. Only one Megalodon tooth was larger than the size of a human palm. The force of their bite could reach 10 tons and allowed them to easily break the chest of a small whale. They were practically unmatched. But still, there were those who could compete with them, such as leviathans, which were several meters longer than the megalodon, or zygophysetas. Goblin fish also lived during the megalodon era. This deep sea shark got its name for its peculiar appearance. The snout of this shark ends in a long, beak like projection, and the long jaws can extend far. Its coloration is also quite unique, with a grey-pink hue. Its length averaged about three and a half metres. Inhabiting waters worldwide, from the Australian waters of the Pacific Ocean to the Gulf of Mexico, this shark prefers to feed on deep-sea squid, crabs and fish. Most likely, this species is now on the brink of extinction. But in the past, it was quite popular in the waters of our planet. But power in the water was not only possessed by those who inhabited it. Flying dinosaurs also had big plans for the aquatic inhabitants, as they were one of the main food sources for them. Seabirds were one of the most fierce dynasties, and what was good for them was practically imperceptible. Thanks to the aquatic cover and the location of fish eyes, they could hardly notice approaching birds, which only waited for the moment to switch from flight to diving. Birds were endowed with incredible eyesight, which helped them find fish despite the glares emanating from the water. The target found, and now it was a matter of catching the fish. Gannets were among the best at this. Their excellent aerodynamic bodies allowed them to reach speeds of up to 100 kilometers per hour when diving and the special structure of their heads allowed them to pierce the water almost without losing the speed gained. Entering the water, they turned into real arrows. Plunging into the water, gannets were able to dive to four meters and hold their breath for 40 seconds. Fish had little chance. Their skills allowed them to become competitors for marine inhabitants with sharks and other fierce predators without fear of becoming prey for them. They managed to do what dinosaurs failed to do, conquer the water. But parallel to the majestic birds, another family is rising, the mammal family. It gradually rose above the world. Ancestors of present-day lions, tigers, small animals, and even us humans appeared. The top predators of that time were creodonts. This order included the most fierce creatures, like the Andrusarchus, for example, the main habitat of this creature was Central Asia. Externally, it resembled a hyena. At the same time, its length could reach four meters. It preferred to hunt small rodents, but larger creatures, which it could easily catch, also fell under its sight. 
but to eat some mammals of that time, Andrusarchus would have to unite in a pack. Like representatives of odd-toed ungulates, such as Brontotheres or Uintotheriums. Both of these creatures were quite large. Their skin resembled that of elephants. It was also grey and had sufficient strength, which prevented predators from piercing it with their teeth. Not all inhabitants were able to live in different climatic conditions, but some of them could easily adapt to life on glaciers as well as in tropical climates, like penguins, for example. Despite their quite cute appearance, they are quite fierce in their hunting. Unable to fly like other birds, they manage to find another way to search for food, swimming. Their bodies have almost no flaws. This allowed them to become skilled swimmers. The streamlined shape of their body allows them to reach speeds of up to 40 kilometers per hour underwater and dive to a depth of 500 meters. Their agile movements allow them to quickly catch their prey. Often hunting in flocks, penguins can devour a school of fish without much effort, but they can also be in danger. Seals, another inhabitant of our planet millions of years ago. These creatures like to chase penguins, picking them off one by one. In our world, everything is interconnected. The stronger eat the weaker. This rule runs like a thread through the entire history of our planet. Birds played an incredibly important role on our planet after the death of the dinosaurs. They continued their lineage, although they did not make it as grand as before. But on Earth, there were those who actually became the dominant force on our planet. Mammals already occupied practically all niches. Their numbers inexorably increased with each million years. Huge mammoths the size of today's elephants already roamed our planet. Tapirs walked around our planet, devouring all the vegetation they saw. These creatures resembled pigs, but unlike them, they had a short trunk adapted for grasping. Our planet completely changed those who were at the top of the food chain. Now, these creatures were not as large, but were just as fierce as dinosaurs. The Eocene epoch breathed new life into our Earth. In a few million years, those from whom we and humans originated will appear. But we will talk about that in the next video. So, subscribe to our channel so you don't miss new videos.